Welcome to this rapid revision video on the theory of the four humours. One of the most important ancient medical ideas that you'll encounter and one that's incredibly important in the medieval period and even after that. So let's get into it. What was the theory of the four humours? This theory was based upon the ideas of Greek philosophers like Aristotle, but particularly it was used by Greek doctor Hippocrates. Hippocrates was a Greek doctor. He used this idea to help him diagnose illnesses and suggest treatments. And that's pretty important, the diagnosis part. Although this is based upon symptoms, it is a logical step towards trying to diagnose people in a sort of scientific way. That's not to say it's right, though. The theory states that the body was composed of four liquids or humours that were linked to the four elements and the seasons. A diagram shows them here. There was blood, phlegm, black bile and yellow bile. If you use a little bit of imagination, you can probably imagine what fluids this means in the body. Blood's pretty obvious, so is phlegm, and you can imagine those things being out of balance. Yellow bile, well, you can imagine that's part of vomit. Black bile, it could be related to, shall we say, number twos, but also is likely to relate to the idea of dry blood and scabs and things like that. The idea of the theory was that if all of these humours in the body are balanced, a person is well. They have a good sense of humour, you could say. If there is too much or too little of a particular humour, then the person becomes unwell. They also believed that it had links to personality as well. This seemed to be further backed up by how certain illnesses seem to be more common at different times of the year. Have another look at the diagram. What season would you say was wet and cold? Probably the winter or maybe the spring. Well, when do you tend to get colds and they're full of phlegm? Well, it tends to be at that time of year. Well, we now understand that that's because we're spending more time indoors and we're more likely to pick up those sorts of bugs. But to the ancient Greeks, all that snot falling out your nose was your body trying to rebalance its humours. This theory is incorrect, but despite this, it does kind of make sense as an idea, which helps to explain why this idea lasted for so long. And crucially, this was an attempt to explain how illness was caused without relying on supernatural ideas like evil spirits and God. Let's have a look at some examples. What about if you have a cold? What are the symptoms? Well, you might have shivers. You might have lots of phlegm and snot. So the ancient Greeks would say that the cause was too much phlegm. And therefore, the treatment would probably be to extract some phlegm to balance the humours. It could be as simple as blowing your nose or maybe breathing in some vapours to encourage it. What about this one then? You have a rash and a fever, a high temperature. So you've got that redness of the skin. You've got the high temperature, which you'd be able to feel. So the belief was that the cause might be too much blood. So the cure might be to bleed the patient and restore the balance of humours. What about if a person is constipated, though? Maybe they're unable to go for a number two. Well, the cause could be too little black bile. The cure, therefore, would be to eat few foods that are laxative, which would basically give you deliberate diarrhoea and it would solve the constipation. Not a nice thought, but it makes sense. You can probably think of some more examples of your own. So what is the importance of this? Well, firstly, does this idea represent progress, continuity or regress? The difficulty for us is in this particular topic, we study medicine from 1250 going through to the present day. In a way, this is our starting point. In ancient Greek times, the four humours really marked progress, though. This was a scientific and rational explanation for illness, even if it was incorrect. However, in medieval times, it represents continuity, an old idea surviving for a very long time. Treatments related to the four humours, especially bleeding, lasted a very long time. Such treatments began to be challenged in the Renaissance, but they still carried on in some forms into the 19th century and right up until Pasteur's germ theory. Indeed, bleeding was considered so vital that some people who were completely healthy would have a weekly bleeding anyway because they thought it was good for them. Of course, it wasn't. Some final points then. The four humours were blood, black bile, yellow bile and phlegm. The theory stated that illness was a result of imbalances in the humours. The theory was a rational explanation of illness. However, this theory was incorrect. Treatments based upon the four humours treated symptoms, not the cause of the disease. Preventions based on the four humours were either common sense or potentially harmful, such as bleeding. The four humours remained one of the most widespread theories of the cause of the disease for centuries. That's the end of this rapid revision video. Thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. And if it was, give this video a like and subscribe.